Hello everyone and welcome to Ohio Nicole Creates. This week I am creating a fun light bulb card with a shocking element to it. And this card I am creating for my brother-in-law's birthday. My brother-in-law is the family electrician, so I thought he would enjoy um, a card that uh, speaks to his interest. Um, to start the project off, as I usually do, I am beginning with the background and I will build elements from there. And to create the background, I wanted to give an illuminated field of light. So I'm starting with the softest color and then blending out to the darkest color. And I have here some liquid watercolors um, using yellow, kind of a medium orange and a light, a darker, darker orange. And so you can see here, I am just um, blending the various colors together. I will use a die cut for this background, so I lose some of the darkest uh, parts towards the end, but overall, I feel it works really well to set the light bulb itself apart um, in the final card. So as always, I'm using my heat gun to dry and kind of speed the process along and just checking to make sure that I have covered every area of the page. The light bulb itself is created from a Tim Holtz die, and I will put the um, description for all of the different supplies I'm using below. Um, but I also wanted to give the light bulb just a little bit of color to it. Um, of course, light bulbs are clear, but um, I wanted to give a little bit of dimension, and I'm doing that by mixing a very light yellow and white from my Paul Rubens pan watercolor set and then also painting the element um, inside the light bulb. Actually, it might be called the filament. <laughs> I should have looked that up. Um, but just painting the various elements that are inside the light bulb, um, different colors uh, to make them set apart from each other. At first, I had painted the um, bottom of the light bulb gray and the inside with a metallic shimmery gold paint, but I do decide that they don't really stand out enough and I will go over them in a moment um, to give them just a little bit more color. And I also added a little bit of a metallic sheen with the metallic watercolors to the light bulb as well to give it a little bit of iridescence. And here you can see I'm using my Zig Clean Color Dot pins. I have a gold and a silver to just color over those elements and make them stand out a bit more. And as always, whenever I watercolor or use pens to color in these various elements, it's important to go over the sides of the elements as well so that um, they have more of a finished look on the final card. Once I've completed all of the various elements for the light bulb, I just kind of test run and put them together to make sure everything um, is working and that the spacing and the structure of the card will work out. After I have completed the parts of the card that you will see, it's time to start working on the internal structure of the card. To cut the card itself, I'm using my Hero Arts Rectangle and Affinity dies. And I really like these dies because you can create all kinds of frames by just using different combinations. But I've used the biggest size rectangle here to cut the top and the base of the card. To create the light feature, I am just simply turning over my card top and tracing around the light bulb just so I can see approximately where the light bulb will cover and what area that will cover. After I've done that, I cut a small window where I can put in the electronics in the card so that the light will shine through. I did find that since I used a heavy grade watercolor paper instead of a cardstock, the light didn't shine quite as brightly, but it can be seen um, in a little bit of a darker setting. To complete the inside of the card, I am using two elements. The first is a mini vibration motor, and the second is copper wire tape and LED stickers from Chibitronics. And if you've seen my past videos, I did use these light elements 
um, to create a, another birthday card with illuminated stars. So I'm using the same process that I used in the previous video, but I did find that it was necessary to have the elements separate and hit the battery from different directions. So I'm using one battery to power the entire card, but I'm having the vibration motor come from the bottom and then the connections for the LED sticker lights come from the top. And this was really helpful. Um, it took a little bit of troubleshooting just to make sure that the different wiring didn't overlap. Um, but once I was able to figure out the spacing, it worked quite well. So I've uh, pasted in the uh, motor and these particular motors actually came um, with self-adhesive backing, um, which was really helpful. So I could just um, post that right in and then I taped down the negative and the positive wires. And then I am running the copper tape so that I can also have a positive and a negative connection touch the battery. The wiring um, with the motors as they came was a little bit short, so it was necessary to use an X-Acto knife and um, fingernails <laughs> to peel back a little bit more of the wire um, so that we could have a larger connection area. And once I was able to do that, um, the motor worked really, really well. and was actually a little bit sensitive. Um, so uh, if you are repeating this process or doing a like process, just make sure the element above your trap door is um, high enough so that it doesn't accidentally set off your trap door. Once I have all of the elements in place and they are working and I've tested them a few times, I go ahead and continue to build the card base by using um, the foam tape. And this particular foam tape is from Hefty Doodle. It is a 12 millimeter wide foam tape. And I find that it is a really great um, width for these kinds of cards because it gives a nice wide um, outside to the base and so then I connect it and attach it and just check that again to make sure that um, the trap door can move freely and all of the wires are connecting and I do suggest um, always always troubleshooting before you glue things down because it can be a pain to have to pick things back up and um, once you've painted and done all of your cutting and arranging it it can be a bit of trouble to have to um, to redo those elements. So if you're using electronics in this way, just take the time to really test them out um, to make sure that they are working. And as you can see here, I've added both a yellow and a red light because I thought it would just make it a little bit more interesting in the final card. Once the base is complete, I go ahead and add on the light bulb feature by using additional pieces of foam tape to pop it up again above the base and just give a little bit more dimension to the card. So with the final card, there will actually be three layers. There will be the base, the middle with electronics, and then the light bulb element on top of all of that. And if you'd like to have more light shine in, you could make the light bulb element go a little bit higher, but I didn't want to have to press the element in too far um, in order to activate the trap door underneath the card. So you can see here that um, when the card is pressed, the orange light and the yellow light do go off. To finish off the card, I am creating a gold frame to go around the front and I'm just using a metallic cardstock and the Hero Arts Infinity dies to finish this off. And um, just checking just to make sure um, that everything fits together. I did want the light bulb to extend a little bit past the top and a little bit past the bottom of the light bulb to um, make the light bulb appear as if it was kind of popping out of the frame or on top of the frame. One thing I really um, feel is important when building cards with foam tape is giving the final card a finished look. Um, so when I have done these dimensional cards in the past, I like to almost create a small box for the card itself. 
And I simply do that by measuring the distance between the layers. And as you notice, when I put the card together, I put the foam tape all the way at the end of the background. And this allows me to use the foam tape as a surface to glue a small strip of paper together. It's a little bit less than one fourth of an inch for this particular card, um, but you would just wanna measure and um, make sure that you have the right um, width and then you can just simply glue it on and i find that it gives the um, entire card a more finished look you don't see any of the tape or any of the inner workings and um, it's just a, a nice little um, nice little finish finishing touch for the card that uh, sets it apart from those cards that um, you can see the foam tape with i adhere a black square onto the back um, to create a birthday message and the final card vibrates and lights up so thank you everyone for watching this video and i look forward to seeing you again with another project next week happy crafting